be able to express yourself in front of people because you end up becoming a closet singer. Right, right. Now you begin your career, uh, I'm checking your bio about uh, you were singing professionally at the age of 16. Uh, yes, I was 16. In Vegas, in Vegas, okay. Tell us about that. Well, I was, um, I was 16 and I got my first call to do a gig at the top of the mint with the jazz group. And, you know, and I was just learning jazz, and they were doing Steely Dan and mm. you know, lots of old standards and Michael Franks and, you know, all these groups that I wasn't familiar with. And I was like, oh, gosh, you know, but I really want to do this. And, and uh, it came time to either start school or to begin singing professionally. And I made the choice. My father said to me, he said, this is your life, it's your journey, and you can take the choice. And I was about to go into 11th grade, and I said, Dad, you know, music's my life, and this is what makes me happy. And that was my first gig um, at the top of the mint. And they didn't know I was underage. Nobody knew. Kidding. Nobody ever knew. Wow. <laughs> it was your, your, uh, your, not only your maturity, and but in your stage presence. So you, you had it going on real early, real early. How did you feel about that first gig? I mean, you know, like once it was over, uh, once you got into it, what, what was your feeling about it? How did you feel? Oh, I felt, you know, I, I felt the connection to the music and uh, I was finding, you know, I was finding depth in the music, whereas, you know, I was, you know, where you can get lost in your generation's time, you know, instead of going there, I was now learning about the 70s and the music from the 60s and, you know, the old, the good old stuff that, that, is, that is classic and timeless. So it gave that to me, it gave me the, the ability to explore. And as, as well as they, they did a couple of songs of that time and they kind of uh, interpreted them in a jazz way. So, so after that, then you start gigging more, or what? After that, I started gigging more, and I was then I got into gigging with top forty bands, and mm -hmm. that was not the funnest time. But <laughs> I ran into a friend of my father's, and he ended up uh, managing me, and that's how I came to LA. I went to New York first, and then I went to Los Angeles, and he was affiliated with a lot of the smooth jazz players out here. Mm. And he introduced me to, I'm sure you're familiar with Michael Paulo. Right, of course, yeah. Yeah, Michael and I started working together and writing together and, um, you know, learn, you know, still recording and, and writing, which was important for me. Um, and then uh, I ended up just doing a lot of studio stuff in Los Angeles and it was, you know, I kept you know, doing recordings, and I kept going after the deals, you know, and it just, it wasn't working, and I had the opportunity to move back to Vegas and, and to work in some clubs with that, at the time, you know, there were quite a few jazz clubs that were, were, you know, around, whereas now it's very sparse. I told you about one of them, but I, uh, I went back there, and it was good for me because I sang out. I sang out, and, and uh, it was a, a great, I met Vernell and was able to incorporate, to learn how to take songs and make them my own and, you know, take songs and put a jazz twist on them. Yes. You know, take songs from the 70s, classic rock songs, and, and turn them, you know, put a jazz twist on them. Have you had an uh, opportunity to go overseas? I have, I, I've only been to France. Okay, okay. Yeah, and that was, uh, that was very interesting. And that was not doing jazz, it was doing... Um, uh, some songs by an, ar uh, an artist producer named Diodato. Uh, oh, I love Diodato. Yeah. yeah, so they brought me over there to do some of his songs in some nightclubs. Wow. Yeah, the next trip, though, is going to be jazz. Right. <laughs> what is, uh, what, the, since you've been working and gigging in different places, what has been your favorite venue? My favorite? Venue. Venue? Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you, coming into Los Angeles, I really love the baked potato. Okay. And that's, uh, I love it. I, it. I love the respect for jazz out here and the way that the, the people really embrace jazz. They, they embrace music. Uh, they listen. And they and they just, it's, it's so beautiful. And so that's one of the places that, you know, um, I've been working with Brandon Fields at with, you know, our project as well as his own when he's there. 
we have some future venues planned that we're working on for next year. What do you got coming up? Well, we're looking at clubs like Vitello's and, um, let's see, the Blue Whale. Mm -hmm. And um, just look at another place called the Hip Kitty. We're just we're just now starting to get into the the vision of the places to play with Divinity Zero. And I've only been back here ten months, so I'm just you know going okay, getting back in the scene. I was gone for almost nine years. Oh wow, yeah, I see where you're coming from. You um uh, you were telling me about uh, East String, the East String. East String in Vegas, yes. Yeah, tell us more about that. The East String is wonderful. It has a bar, mm -hmm. a guitar store, and then a wonderful live room. Um, that is that. It's so great because there is a listening crowd there, which is so rare in Vegas that you get that. And every Monday night they do a they do a jazz there, mm -hmm. and it's so great. And they get great players, all the the wonderful players that don't get a chance to express themselves that are working more for the dollar in Vegas. They go there and and play some great jazz. You, you were, speaking of expressing yourself, um, you were an artist too, right? You're painting. Yes. And how did how long have you been painting and, and what inspired you to get into it? Oh, wow. You know, when I was in, another thing happened when I was in sixth grade. I, I found the love for drawing. When I started singing, I, I started playing guitar, and then I, when I started singing, I dropped everything. I was like, that's it. <laughs> I put all the energy there. And then a, a few years ago, um, I had a friend who was painting, and she said, come, you know, come over, here's a canvas, and just sit down and paint.